Hi, Alan. It's so good Hi. to see you. Thank you so much uh, for joining us today on Alexander Technique Made Easy. Now, Alan is um, the uh, now head teacher at CTC, Constructive Teaching Center. But uh, first of all, Alan, tell me, how did you get into the Alexander Technique? Well, um, through Ruth Murray, who was uh, one of the uh, teachers on the Constructive Teaching Center and obviously came to be running it. Um, and I joined her in that endeavor. Um, and that was in 1970. Uh, Ruth started her training in 1977, January 1977. And we were working at Cranks, which was a vegetarian whole food restaurant at the time. That's where I met Ruth oh, in Cranks. And so we shared brilliant. all that background. Oh, you both and, worked there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. Yes, I know. Okay. And uh, so <laughs> when she finished, she used to come to my singing teacher's workshops every so often. And she yes. said, as soon as I've qualified, I'm going to give you Alexander lessons. Of course, you could do with some. Oh. And I thought, hang on. <laughs> I think I'm OK. <laughs> you know, we all think that, don't we? And so yes. she qualified in 1980. And I started oh. having lessons at, at Lansdowne Road with her um, in the in the Jan in 1980. Yeah, and, but did you find that it was really fantastic and you thought, oh, I feel great, or, or what happened? Because you obviously went Not, on to do quite a lot of Alexander after that. <laughs> yes, I, I continued. And, you know, I'm sure you've had the same experience, Nick. When you yeah. first start lessons, the first few lessons, you think, well, what's all this about? Do and you? then suddenly, <laughs> um, you, I was walking down the street to the underground station at Holland Park, and I was halfway down Lansdowne down road and I realized that I didn't feel that my feet were on the ground Ooh, yeah and I just thought gosh that's an incredible how did I get here yes and I don't feel as if I've been walking and I suddenly yeah. as I became more aware of that um I became more and more on the ground until I got to the <laughs> underground and I was in my feet I think I probably experienced <laughs> I think I probably experienced that slightly more than you did. Because <laughs> I, I started off up here above the ground, you see. Yes. I came back down again. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So of course. Mm. But the other thing obviously that's interesting about it is the way it affected your singing. Yes. So you must have had an impact there. Yes, I was very lucky with my singing teacher who I'd heard about in Australia. And it was very interesting because when I used mm. to have the odd lesson with Walter Carrington we would sometimes he would sometimes talk to me about my singing teacher because I had said several things over the years yeah. and Walter said to me I I'm very sorry that I never had an opportunity to meet her and I said well you would have got on very well because you would shared a lot in common and mm. I started having lessons obviously before I had um, Alexander yeah and I realized that what Florence was saying to me was so hand in glove with really the Alexander technique of not pulling down, not yes. sucking in breath, not pulling your head back, not, not raising your shoulders when you breathe, standing yeah. there, weight evenly mm. distributed, singing on the smile, uh, yes. speaking on the smile, all of yes. that soft palate up business that we talk about with the whispered yeah. art. Mm. And it was only really after starting lessons that I realised mm. the commonality that there was between what, Florence as a as a voice teacher I mean she's taught singing but she really was a voice teacher in the fullest sense of the word sure. and yeah. um because she had a lot of actors who went to her as well as singers mm -hmm. and um and 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 the technique and so combined I found it was a really powerful tool uh of yeah. of mm. of the way to use ourselves um yeah. in, in in using our voice you know yeah 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 I mean I I couldn't um I, I obviously came to the Alexander and I started uh, playing the flute before I had hyperventilation. And then with the oh, right. Alexander technique, I could breathe. So I mean, I literally couldn't breathe properly in a singing or flute situation before the Alexander technique. So it does have a tremendous impact on that. But, um, yeah. um, but uh, of course, uh, you know, you, that was a long time ago when you first started. A lot yes. has happened since then. Uh, yes. Now you find yourself sort of in charge of, uh, of, of the Constructive Teaching Centre. But before we go into that, how did it get its name, the Constructive Teaching Centre? I mean, I'm sure there's a story behind that. Yes, well, of course, you know that um, Walter was with Alexander in Ashley Place and Alexander died in 1955. Yes. And so from night and then there was a little bit of, oh, there were a few problems, which I don't want to go into with the Alexander family <laughs> and and uh, yeah. 
uh, Pat McDonald, et cetera, et cetera. So Walter moved out um, with Margaret Goldie and, um, and, and other teachers, and he was renting uh, a space. Uh, mm. And it was only um, through the, um, the Crips, Sir Stafford Crips and Lady Crips, who were great devotees and advocates of Alexander's work. Yes. Um, and Lady Cripps had that house in Lansdowne Road, which was called the Isabella Cripps Centre. And it was a centre mm. where she had for complementary um, practices. And Charles Neal, you may remember the Alexander teacher, he was working there as the Alexander teacher in the Isabella Cripps Centre. Now, Charles died in 1959, mm. sort of quite early on. Yeah. And yeah. Lady Cripps knew of Walter's dilemma. And so she offered him the Lansdowne Road at a, in those days, quite a lot of money. I think it was £23,000. But wow. Walter had to then have a name of a, of a school and, and yeah. uh, when he moved there. So it couldn't be the Alexander technique or something like that. So he just, he decided to call it the Constructive Teaching Centre as a name yes. that was not really associated with anything particularly, but was, no, it was no. interestingly and it's interesting enough to make people think, what is constructive teaching? What is yeah, that all yeah. about? Yeah, well, I mean, it kind of is a good name for it. And, and it, mm. it kind of also reflects well how Walter might have thought about it, because he, he thought, as we all do, that it's the most constructive way to teach you can imagine. Uh, so, Absolutely. So, that, yeah. 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 so yeah. Um, and the, the, oh, let me just see, I've already lost all my the questions that I've got here. Uh, yeah, I mean, so obviously, yes, yeah, so so that is obviously a bit of the history of uh, CTC, and then Walter Carrington went on to run it with Dillis, and I mean, mm. it's a, it's yeah. such a long line now, isn't it? Since you started all that, yes. like, did you ever think that you would end up running uh, this? Uh, school? No, uh, no. <laughs> yeah, I kind no. of thought you'd say that. I didn't think you did. I mean, no. I, even when I trained, I didn't really think that. You know, oh yes, it'll soon be. You know, I mean, it, it has been an extraordinary. Well, the last 20 years, really, um, of change. Yes. Now, because, of course, uh, that was back in Lansdowne Road, and now the school is no longer in Lansdowne Road. It's, That's correct. in a way, uh, gone up market to, to this very trendy area of uh, <laughs> Imperial Wharf. I don't know if that's <laughs> how you see it, but when I visited the other day, I, I, I was sitting in one of those restaurants outside, you know, and it all seems terribly... But uh, I mean, do you like the area there now um, compared to Lansdowne Road, which, of course, was lovely as well? You know, but... Yes. Well, difficult to compare to Lansdowne Road because yeah. um, although we have the overground just, you know, the same distance almost as Holland Park Station was to yes. number 18. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a it's a slightly strange area in as much as you've got a lot of flats above where where we are and quite a lot of those flats are owned by overseas people so in the winter and the middle eastern people they're in the winter here they're back there in the middle east and so a lot out. of flats are dark they fly so, south for the winter <laughs> exactly exactly well who wouldn't so, <laughs> well quite so a lot of a lot yeah. of um uh, that's a little bit sort of strange, but yeah. we've been there since we moved into there in um, uh, January, February 2012. Yeah, right. Um, so we left Lansdowne Road in 2010, and then we had one year where we were sort of itinerant, and we ha we hired a room at the Porchester Baths, oh, and right. we were there for a year, which was quite quite challenging because we just yeah. had to stack everything up every day and of course it was a room we were just hiring etc cetera, etc cetera. and eventually uh we uh, we got there when when certain things had been sorted out yeah. um yeah. with the family yeah. and that and uh, how much money they were going to um give to help set re-establish the constructive teaching center after 18 yeah. number 18 it was really so, quite a job it was quite yeah. I mean, I imagine the Alexander technique would have been quite quite helpful in dealing with all the stress <laughs> of that time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. So that well, I used to go out looking for properties in the afternoon with Annie Sayer quite often, and we'd really? have all of that sort of thing, and come back and say no that, and then other people who said they'd like to help, and they would put some money in. But all of these things are wonderful ideas, but yeah, very few people in our world sadly 
can be totally altruistic. They have the best yeah. intentions of yeah. wanting to yeah. give money and help, mm -hmm. but then there's always, yes, but I would like, and uh, yes. yeah, 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 and no, then it becomes a much more difficult situation. We live in a commercial world. <laughs> yes, yes, so, yes. But it was quite, so I mean, really in a way, I mean, it's quite a good thing that you've actually managed to keep the school going. And in a way, you could might also say that you managed to keep it going against all odds because it's been quite hard work. It's got, I mean, even the establishment of this new school has got quite a history. Yes, it's quite a history now. And of course, it's very sad that Ruth passed away recently. Um, but she was always uh, in charge at that at Imperial Wharf, uh, and you've taken over from her, right? Well, we we it was set up a bit like when. Ruth was asked by Walter to become a co-director of the CTC. Yeah. And that happened back in the day when Ruth and Walter, uh, when Walter and Dillis were going to Sydney for one of the congresses. Oh. And we weren't going because it was such a long, it was very expensive and we couldn't yeah. go. But Walter said to Ruth, uh, I want you to become a director of the CTC. And Ruth said, no, I don't want to be. And he said, well, look, um, this is really a practical thing because if there happens to be a plane crash and Dillis and I are no longer, we need someone who is a, a, a co-director and, and can go on. So that's really how it happened with Ruth. And mm -hmm. then when uh, Walter passed away in 2005 yeah. and then Dillis for the last few years of her life, she passed away in 2009. Um, yeah. And then we had John, John Brown, and of course he passed away in 2008. Mm -hmm. And um, so I was then the, All the, people the name that the system. Me. You know, if I, if, I, if, I, if I think about that crowd of people, they are the main people that pushed me into this Alexander world, you know, taught me everything I know today. Well, of course, of course including yourself. So, yes, it's quite a... <laughs> it, was quite a it was quite a sort of a... a, 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 a a vortex of things happening in, in a fairly short space of time. Yes, too short, and, too short mm, space of time. Too short too, space of time. Too short space of time. Really. Yeah. Um, so I became made a co-director in about 2014 because Ruth said, look, I think you should become a co-director like me because if anything happens to me, the same, the same thing. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I could be made up to head of training, but that isn't necessarily yeah. a fait accompli. But as right. co-director of the Constructive Teaching Centre, I can just, from their point of view, the CTC, mm. not necessarily STAT, but the yeah. CTC's point of view, I'm at the helm. So Ruth and I sort of stood, I mean, somebody said to me, oh, Alan, you've had to step up to the plate now that Ruth has passed away. And I said, well, actually, I don't have to step up to the plate. Ruth and I were standing on the same plate. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you yeah. Know, so, and that's yeah. how it's been so it's, for quite a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah, exactly. No, I imagine that. Yes. So that's good. So the, the, it's not been a very uh, challenging turnaround and keeping things going, but uh, not from that point of view. No. There have been other challenges, which I've been very pleased that um, the people that I've asked to, to come in and help. Uh, I specifically did that for various reasons, and one was to look at the financial state. Because we are in a unique position, CTC. We're probably the only training course in the world that has its own premises that are not in a rented hall or in someone else's, in someone's house, the head of training's house. Yeah. It is an independent building. We are a charitable trust that brings with it, of course, quite a lot more work with the charity yes. commissioners, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Mm -hmm. So we are in a unique position, but being in that position also mm. brings a lot more onerous work well it responsibility i suppose and, and administration yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. it's a tremendous uh, responsibility isn't it um um because um i mean that's one of the questions i wanted to ask today is, is, is of course um well we all know that we had a tremendous training and that there's been some wonderful people around uh to train uh when lansdowne rovers around and so on we also know that we've lost some of the best teachers in the world and possibly that the world could ever see how do we um, uh, go forward? Uh, how is CTC thinking about that, just in terms of pure Alexander technique, and keep maintaining the standards, keeping a good influx of good teachers and so on? How, how is that working? Because, of course, that's one of the most uh, important things about this sort of YouTube video we're making today. Is we want to really tell people that CTC is really still a very strong school and still a very good place to train. So how are we maintain yes. those particular standards? 
Well, it's a very good question, Nick. Interesting question. A complex question. Yes. I've just come yes. back from Berlin, from the Congress in Berlin, oh, uh, really? doing workshops there um, mm -hmm. on behalf of the CTC with yeah. uh, four other teachers um, trained with us. Mm. And I'm going to be a little bit controversial here. You mm. can edit it out if you wish. But <laughs> no, probably not. <laughs> I, I saw a lot of stuff going on there which I consider really not very relevant to the work that we do. Right. A lot of yes. people getting um, pulled into the uh, everything to do with sort of identity and sexual identity and where the Alexander Technique stands with that and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. To me, the technique is far beyond any of that. And yes, if we are talking about that and dealing with that, we have not understood what the principal message of this work is. Absolutely. Yes. But that's what I think. So we went well, I think to that's there. a very important thing. And it's very important to be clear about that. Uh, because yes. the Alexander Technique is about the use of the self. And exactly. it doesn't actually matter if you're a horse. There are horses yeah. that have benefited from this technique. And they are welcome, as is anybody else. Exactly, exactly. So, And you don't need to discuss don't that. Don't give us any rubbish about it, about it because we're yeah, not interested in that either. No. No. <laughs> so, As the Carrington used to say, of course, um, we, we, we don't want to be judgmental because it doesn't help. If we could be judgmental and it would, could help, we would be judgmental and we'd get into all kinds of things. But actually, with the technique, it doesn't work. So we don't bother. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no ex exactly right. So we go, the uh, CTC's uh, position is that we like to think that we are the traditional Yes. way of looking at the work and we yeah. don't want to vary from that so when we go to the congresses yeah. we generally call our workshops getting back to basics yes it's just right that really just the basic stuff as taught by walter mm -hmm. as he mm -hmm. got it from alexander walter of course exact uh, uh, naturally took on and developed alexander because we all know that alexander wasn't the best teacher of teaching people to be teachers he was a good yeah. teacher of the technique yeah. if you came in as joe blogs from the street but yeah. he he expected them to to work it out a lot themselves he came and gave them a lesson each they could ask him any questions yeah. that they wanted to and then he left the room and they had to get on and work with yeah. themselves yeah. and sort it out so yeah. walter developed all the games that you remember and when you were on the training course and yeah. all that was all yeah. walter's stuff yeah. and the structure of the day of the training course walter did all that and put it into a sort of yeah. a format like that and uh, dillis was quite big in that as well wasn't she she developed she was. a lot of stuff as well she, yeah. she was yeah. absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. right it's so we really are we'll keeping that going we are not changing that um no. and while i'm there that won't change duncan mm. knowles is there now and he is very enculturated if you like with the yes. whole of the ctc and the heritage of that as yes. well and we just think it's terribly important that that remains those yes. foundations are there um because you know go back to the old biblical thing of the people building their houses on sand Yes. It's not the yes. foundation for a good house. You know, yeah. once you've got the foundation, good. you can go into other things and look at them, but you've got to have that foundation. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think. Then you can great. say, how do I apply this to Pilates or to whatever it yes. is? Yeah. But yeah. That mm. shouldn't affect your understanding. If the foundation is strong, that will not shake the foundation because somebody comes along and says something to you. Oh, but what about that? And go, oh, my goodness. What about that? Did we get it wrong? No, we didn't. Haven't got it wrong. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You see, Nick, I think yeah. one of our greatest tragedies at the moment in this work is that Alexander teachers. I say to people, Alexander teachers, do you believe in this work? You've trained for three years. You went for lessons before because you had a problem. It helped you. It did all sorts of things for you. Do you believe in it? They say, yes, I do. I said, well, if you believe in it, go out and be an evangelist. Yeah, quite. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm on that uh, thing, possibly because I was trained at CTC. Uh, but I think more from my own experience, <clears throat> you know, I mean, I've always talked to people about this particular question because, you know, you get something quite wonderful and people always, and that's the creativity of human nature, they always want to change things and, and do things slightly differently. 
And I think, well, that's great. You know, I mean, I get people saying to me, oh, I don't use the directions anymore or or I don't do it this way or I don't do that or I don't believe that was right when they said this. And I think to them, well, you know, what the way I was taught was the pure way, the pure Alexander Technique, and it worked for me and changed my life and improved things so much. Why would I play with that? If I if I want to do something creative, I might write a story or, or, or play a piece of piano or do some singing, mm-hmm. you know or play a game, you know, but this is what we do and that mm. is what we played with. But but there are many people that disagree with that. And I think that's fine. But of course, I think it is true to say that if you want to, to, to learn in the original way, you do have to be very careful about which school you go to uh, and which teachers you hang out with, because there are a lot of, um, well, dare I say it, crazy folk out there, you know. <laughs> Let's say interesting. <laughs> interesting yes interesting Mm. but it's nice to know in a way that yes there is some way you can go very pure you know really doing Alexander Technique not wanting to teach you sort of uh, you know literary criticism at the same time or hiding the philosophy you know just just no no (laughs) No, because we've had people come here to us at CTC and sort of said who have come from other schools and and they may have been finishing their training and they'll initially they'll say oh you're quite traditional here aren't you and um, <laughs> you know, in a way, a bit old-fashioned. Yes, and I, I say yes. Me. Probably we are, and yeah. they say, mm. and then after a few months, they'll say, actually. I quite like this approach. <laughs> yeah, I say, oh, well, that's good yeah. because it's not going to change. Yeah, yeah. But it sure. takes a little while to get people back to, because we're not there to overstimulate them. And every day has to be a circus day. We're going to keep quite. going back to the same yeah. basic things until you have understood mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Until you, when somebody said to Dillis, what would you consider to be the, 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 the an attribute of a good teacher? And she just stopped as she used to pause and sometimes the she'd look up slightly and her eyelids would flutter a little bit and she might adapt her glass and she'd say the ability to leave themselves alone (laughs) yeah exactly that was it yes yes well and we still i mean i still struggle with that today you know (laughs) it's uh, i mean i think that's the other side of it as well is 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 that the work that we do can be deceptively simple yes but if you really want to take it to a very uh high standard and really be, uh, dare I say it, embodying that work, that is not easy. And, mm. uh, you know, it's like um, very zen in that way. You know, you, you keep practicing the same thing. Yes, you do. And, and and you might find that boring, but like water carrot, and you say, if you find that boring, you're probably not doing it correctly. Um, yes, yes. But I think that that is what happens to, to human beings is that they're very creative. They get very bored and they say, oh, you know, I'm going to try it like this or I'm going to try it like that. And they, they might get an experience out of it. But what they don't realize is that they're, they're not they got to where they are today because they went through the proper procedures now you've got somebody coming to you for those proper procedures. They're not coming for all your creativity. No, no, absolutely. No, you're absolutely right. It is Um, is, uh, all of that, all that creativity stuff that you're talking about and, 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 you know, fancy stuff that might be all very interesting around a dinner table with a few Alexander mates and a glass of wine and people sort of chuckle sorts of things into the air. But, you know, in the cold, hard light of day, we have to have those basic foundational things. And as Walter said, somebody said to Walter, um, you know, you've been teaching for 60 years, Walter. Do you ever find it boring? And he said, <laughs> good heavens, no. He said, if I did the same thing every day and said the same words to every person, I would have given up long ago. But he said, "You, everyone is an individual who comes to you and you have to find the way of getting through to them mm. the same thing. Well, another way of would be, uh, another way of, you know, do you ever get bored of feeling good? Well, no, exactly. <laughs> no, exactly. Yes, exactly. It's not boring. No. Feeling good is no. not boring, you know. No. But uh, so, um, so you've gathered a team around you of of, of new teachers uh, and old, I suppose. Um, yes. And and you've got quite a variety of teachers coming in, have you? I mean, Duncan's yes. now what the co-director and your assistant, or uh, he's um, he's sort of co-director, um, and yeah. um, he's um, in the process of becoming named assistant. Right, yeah. So he's very much in there with you as well. Absolutely, yes, um, yes. And hands on teaching and, and on uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Every yeah, day, yeah. yeah. He, he's there like Ruth and I 
were yes. there. And yes. then we have every day visiting at, at least one other teacher on the pay. And and luckily, people like just to come in and say, can I come in on this day? And other yes. teachers said they, just, they yes. just come in, and which is lovely. Yeah. Yeah. So it keeps going. It keeps going. That, that's it keep, great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Gloria is still coming, doing her horsework. Gloria oh, yes. is still coming, oh. doing her coursework, saddle work there, which oh, is so great. You still get the saddle work then if you're terrible. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Oh, God, I used to find that so hard. <laughs> 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 but, you you know, that was going back to what we started talking about, was you just feel your feet on the ground in a way that you suddenly realise how trees must feel, you know. Yes. Rooted. Yes. Rooted. Yes. Yeah, yeah, very good. Um, uh, now, what I was going to say was, um, uh, how do people get to train at CTC now? Um, I mean, do they need any experience or how does that work? Well, of course, you remember from the old days, mm. there was a waiting list of about six years at Lansdowne Road mm. with Walter and Dillis. Um, yeah. But times, as we all know, have changed. And... Mm. Um, mm. And especially now, we're in a very interesting time when people are, don't know where, where, where the pound is going. <laughs> we don't know anything. And so people mm. are very worried uh, with the cost of everything going up. Um, and yeah. I'm wondering how that's going to impact on people thinking of training and giving yeah. up three mm -hmm. years of not expensive when you look at some trainings that people do or universities of, of, of how expensive that is mm -hmm. to do a three-year training at a university but nonetheless it's still money the yep. good thing about alexander training is that it is full-time part-time so you can work uh, yes. as well and earn some money which is yeah. a, which is a great thing and we're only four days a week now so that leaves a friday free so there's one oh, full so day free really so get it, people yeah, can. Yeah, yeah, get, right. It, it, exactly. Right. Um, certainly we like people to have had, uh, they have to have some lessons from a teacher before they come. Yes. Um, that is absolutely essential. It's unlikely they'd want to train it otherwise, I suppose. In, well, in sense, yes. I suppose you have to have, you have to know what you're sort of getting into, I suppose. No, yeah. no, no, quite. Good. Uh, OK, well, that's great. I mean, what, what we're going to do is uh, below this video, there will be all the information about how to get, get in touch with you and like emails and what, you know, all the information, the website, yeah. LinkedIn, et cetera, like that. So anybody interested, look down below the video and all the information will be there. Now, the other thing, of course, is that um, the Water Carrington Archives and the Memorial Trust are based at Imperial uh, Wharf, aren't they? Yes. So could you talk a little bit about that? Because that's another huge responsibility, isn't it? Both well, it, it, it <clears> is. <throat> and um, when a chap called Shang Fisher was working there as our administrator and his now wife, Regina Stral, mm. um, she did start to um, sort out the archives and start to uh, categorise them. Um, and of course, she, you might remember, has just published the book on Irene Tasker. Well, of course, she yes. got some of the information about Irene from the archives yeah. and then from a lot of other people yeah. around. Mm -hmm. um, but there is still quite a lot of boxes of unsorted material that have never been sorted, uh, papers and letters and stuff, because there's just so much of it. And it's a wow. job that somebody has to be paid to do. And we don't have the money to do that. Oh, and of right. course, you know, one would like to get it all mm. digitalized so that it's all there and available. So that is a project which when mm. maybe a little bit of money becomes available that can be devoted to actually getting Walter's archive completely um, sorted um, there. So yeah. the Walter Carrington Educational Trust is the charity side of the Constructive yeah. Teaching Centre. Mm. Uh, and uh, that, of course, has got trustees and um, they are responsible for, you know, the archive. And we have a bursary um, which with Ruth's passing, there was quite a lot of nice uh, donations in lieu of people sending flowers and things. Yeah. To the, the, the family said to give it to the to, uh, to the bursary fund for Ruth. Yeah. Um, so that that sort of got that up a little bit more again now. But as with everything at the moment, everything's tight and we work on a tight budget. Yeah. Um, and we just have to do that. But um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. we're, we're you know we've we've come up again th through some very um, testing times financially, yes. yeah. but yeah. everyone's worked and pulled their belts in and, you know, as I say, cut the cloth accordingly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank well, goodness. And the and good thing is that CTC is still running. And CTC is still running after 60 odd years. Yes, yeah. yes. And that, that is good news. Um, well, that's great, Alan. Well, thanks very much for that. I just wanted to obviously talk to you about all that and make sure that people were aware 
who are coming to my channel, uh, you know, obviously the Alexander Technique Made Easy, that they'll find uh, your school uh, there and some representation of it. So that's great. Thank um, you. Yeah. And of course, um, now uh, <clears throat> all the information, as I say, will be below the video. And um, well, let's hope that it runs for another 60 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't be there for that 60 years, I can assure you. Well, you never know. I can assure you of that. Well, you never know. <laughs> no, I, I, I do know. I do know, Nick. You're looking at a 70-year-old, and so I think that <clears throat> I don't think another 60 years I'm going to be looking too good. <laughs> we, we all stay so young these days, particularly with the Alexander Technique. <laughs> well, yeah. I, well, you, we, we joke about that, but there is some truth in that. Yes, yes. There really is. Well, stress. People do say to me, but you can't be that age. I said, but if I put on the, if I assume the body shape of a, of a typical 70 year old that you see around and I do it, I said, you will see how aging that is, how well, quickly quite, that yeah, ages no, absolutely, you. Absolutely, yeah. And, I, and, mm. and as you used to say when I was training Lanzaron, you know, you have a lot of old people that you work with. And of course, uh, yeah, you, 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 you can do wonders in that department. And uh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, a big part of our work is working, giving mobility to old people. And, and that is a great Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. And, and taking away the, the, the fear that, that yeah. creeps in with elderly people, fear of falling, all of that, which just tightens them up and makes everything so much worse. Yeah. And has that and that's, that's the thing. Yeah. yeah Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for, for, for coming today and uh, doing this well, video. Nick, it's um, a, a great, it was a, it's a surprise to be doing it. It's a pleasure to have done it. It was very nice to see you at Ruth's uh, memorial celebration, which, of course, then you suggested so, doing this otherwise. So I'm yeah. not going to say thank you, Ruth, for passing away, because we probably wouldn't have done it. But, <laughs> you know, it was the thing that brought us um, together. So that's really, really nice. Yeah, brilliant. Well, I'll, I'll definitely obviously be visiting uh, CTC soon. Uh, Please do. And uh, and that'll be great. Uh, so we'll, I'll see you probably next at CTC.